morning, good morning, good morning. Keisha Johnson here. Welcome to Waking Early for His Glory. You can find me here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for catching the replay. If you can be so kind and type in hashtag replay in the comments so I'll know that you are watching. And if you are tuning in for the very first time, please type a number one in the comments so I'll know that you're watching. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, good morning, good morning to all of you that are jumping on live right now good morning as you all are jumping on let me log on to my ipad here as you all are jumping on please go ahead and begin to share out the broadcast mackie dana lady ruby how are you all good morning sherelle good morning good morning so good to see you all hello hello let me go ahead and um get this shared remember we are all called to evangelize and to spread the word of god so let's go ahead and begin to share the broadcast out to your personal pages as well as your community groups as you're jumping on and i'm going to go ahead and get this shared in my community groups if someone can share this and we write the word for me please as you all are jumping on good morning adrena good morning good morning so good to see you all <laughs> great morning everyone hi gloria I need to check, Gloria, did you respond to my message? Um, I responded to your message in Messenger, so I'll have to check it after um, the broadcast. Great morning, everyone. Hi, Debbie. Good to see you all. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Jamie. Farida. Yes, go ahead and type in. My hands are blessed. If you have not already, make sure that you've grabbed your anointing oil and that you have anointed your hands and go ahead and say, my hands are blessed. Everything that I touch is blessed. Everything that I touch plug prospers. Everything that I touch multiplies. These blessed hands will lay hands on the sick. They will be healed and they will recover in Jesus name. Good morning, Jennifer. I, I know you all are traveling, right? I didn't know if I was going to see you today. So good to see you, Jennifer. Good morning. All right. Give me just a moment to get this shared um, into my community group and then we will um, we'll get going. We'll get going. All right, and also share uh, what time did you all go to bed last night? What time did you wake up this morning? Um, I was kind of tired yesterday, so I went to bed somewhere, and I think it was a 10 o'clock hour, really early. Um, and I only hit the snooze button one time, praise the Lord. So I got up. <laughs> I got up. I got up. All right, let's go ahead and um, let's see. Make sure I turn off my notifications because people call me during the broadcast. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Joanne. As you all are jumping on, go ahead and share the broadcast. Please come back and type in shared. Um, and as I always say, if you are on this broadcast live or if you are catching the replay, yes, thank you, Father for Calvary. That means that you were on the wake up list, praise the Lord, and that is not a small thing. So let's just take a moment to just thank the Father for waking us up this morning. Um, so let's go ahead and begin to, uh oh, someone already is messaging me here. All right, so let's go ahead and begin to thank the Father and go ahead and share in the comments what you're thankful for this morning. Yes, Annie, your hands are blessed. Amen. So, Father, we thank you. Father, we honor you. Father, we bless you. Father, we thank you for being God. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, Father, for being so awesome and so amazing. We thank you, Father, that you are good in every way that there is to be good. And we just want to say thank you this morning. We don't want to ask you for anything this morning, Father. We just want to say thank you. My hands are blessed. Amen, Talisha. We just want to say thank you. We thank you, Father, for waking us up this morning. We thank you, God, for allowing us to see another day. We thank you, Father, for a sound mind. We thank you for a sound mind on this morning. We thank you, God, for waking us up with a mind to want to spend time with you we thank you father for waking us up um, just with a mind to want to spend time in your word great morning Monique good to see you good to see you so you all begin to type in the comments what you're thankful for and as you all are continuing to do that I'm going to go ahead and um, read our opening verse for today um, you all listen every morning when I open up my eyes the first thing I say is thank you before my feet even hit the floor I just just thank and praise God I'm just so thankful and so grateful um, that God has allowed us to see another day and to just come together to spend time in his word together. That's not a small thing. 
Um, and I always say this, what if you woke up today with only what you thanked God for yesterday? What would you have? Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I see that. Um, what would you have? So it's just important that we take time to just stop and thank him. You know, there's just so much that he's done, so much that he's doing, even if he never does another thing. Um, just you know, just incredibly thankful. All right, so our opening verse for today is coming from the book of Psalm, verse uh, chapter 40, verse 3. The book of Psalm, chapter 40, verse 3, and it reads, He has given me a new song to sing. Somebody say new song. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in in him how many of you can say right now that many can even look at what the lord has done in you that many can even look at what the lord has done in your life <laughs> and be amazed. You know, I look at my own life and I look at what the Lord has done and I am amazed. I'm just like, my God, just so amazed at the great things that he has done. So I'm going to go ahead and read our um, prophetic word for today, which is coming from the Father's Heart Ministry. Um, and then I'll go ahead and, and share what it is that the Lord has for me to share. Yes, y'all type in new song. Y'all say new song with me. He has given me a new song. And I can say that right now, the Lord has given me personally, Keisha Johnson, a new song to sing. And I'm so thankful and I'm so grateful, just so incredibly thankful and grateful. So the Father says today, let your praise and your worship be imbued with the freshness of heaven. The songs of yesterday have their place, but I have put a new song in your heart. The songs of yesterday Yes, they do. They have their place. But God is saying today, I have put a new song in your heart. I created you as a being whose heart and inner inner core are entirely permeable to music and song. Your very human spirit is an instrument of music far more beautiful and subtle than the sweetest refrain of the most refined refined instrumentation man can make. When I draw near to you by my presence, your spirit vibrates to my frequency. Your spirit vibrates to my frequency. Just as the doorposts of my throne room resonate and smoke at the sound of my voice, so your inner man reverberates in response to the words of my mouth. Yes, y'all type in new. That's right, Debbie, new, new song. God has given me a new song to sing, a new song. Receive the resonance of heaven in your heart today. Never allow the disharmony of the sounds of the fallen environment around you to draw you or to dampen your spirit. I have called you to higher things. Can somebody say higher thing this morning? The Lord is calling you higher. The Lord is calling some of you to higher things. You are not a creature of the earth. Earthly you are earthly earthly you are a creature of the heavenly formed and fashioned to reflect my glory and ways and my glory and ways the most senior angel in my encampment could never do rise up rise up somebody say rise up with me rise up to your full purpose open your mouth and sing the songs of the spirit not written by human hand or in any meter that spirit instrument that human instrumentation may orchestrate my glory is within you my glory is within you says the father it is in you and flowing out of you into your surroundings this is where the joy <laughs> that is my kingdom and the peace that is my kingdom originates and it is your full portion by my hand this day i need you all to say this morning it is my full portion it is my full portion it is my full portion and again i'm just so thankful and so grateful to god just so thankful for who he is and what all he has done um again and i'm sure some of you can relate to this if he never does another thing if he never does another thing i still say thank you i still say thank you he has been incredibly faithful. So I want to read um, the book of Acts. If you all have your Bibles, go to the book of Acts with me. And I'll be reading from Acts chapter 2. And I'll read verses 42 through 47. Acts chapter 2. Um, and I'll read um, 
verses 42 through 47. Hang on just a moment. Verses 42 through 47. And it reads, they devoted. Can y'all say devoted with me? They devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miracles, many wonder, many wonders and miracles signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone as they had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. <laughs> with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people and the Lord. Somebody say, and the Lord. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Those who were being saved. And listen, this is what living a life of worship looks like. This is worship. This is what living a life of worship looks like. And I believe, let me tell you all, I read through the book of Acts a lot. Um, I usually read, try to read like a chapter a day every day um, or like a chapter or two every day. Um, I haven't been in here, I would say, in probably the last two months, but I remember the first time a year ago, um, last, I think it was a, a year, um, actually two years ago, where I really read and sat and read through this book and read and reread and read and reread for like about two or three months. I could not leave um, out of the book of Acts. And it really, really blessed me and really, really opened up my eyes to some things. And I began to have some questions, you know, about a lot of things, especially um, just regarding the church body as a whole and like what has changed? Why doesn't it look, you know, the church of today? Why, isn't it, why doesn't it look like the church of old? Just a lot of different questions. Um, and I believe, you know, that we too, you know, as the early church did, can manifest the press, can um, experience the manifest presence of God, manifest presence of God, just like they did in the early church. I really, really believe that and just really remaining hopeful, <laughs> um, just really remaining hopeful. So I want to talk about um, worship this morning, true worship that is, all right, true worship. And I believe that true worship is a matter of the heart. Can you all say heart this morning? It's a matter of the heart. Um, so let's talk about what is worship? What is worship? So the definition of worship is ascribing worth to something or someone. Worship is ascribing worth to something or someone. So the question is, who or what are you ascribing worth to? So worship is ascribing worth to something or someone. And again, true worship is a matter of the heart. Good morning to those of you that just jumped on. Good morning, good morning. Um, so I wrote, God calls us to worship him. He deserves it. You know, he desires it and he pursues it. We are all called. We were created to worship. We are all called to worship him. He desires it. <laughs> he pursues it and he deserves it. I need you all to say that with me this morning. Yes, it is your full portion, amen. He desires it, he pursues it, and not only that, he deserves it. He deserves our worship. And what what I wanna say this morning, if we choose not to worship God, we are worshiping someone else. So the question is, who are we ascribing our worship to? You know, is it to God? You know, because if we're not worshiping God, we're worshiping something or someone else. That can be our job, that can be money, that can be our relationships, that can be social media, that can be our our dreams, goals, visions, our businesses. You know, what is it? If you are not worshiping God, what or who are you worshiping? And so we really need to be we we really need to be mindful of that. You know, we can worship people, you know, sports, so many other things. So again, worship, the def by definition, worship is ascribing worth to something or someone. So who are you worshiping is my question to you this morning or what are you worshiping? Who or what are you worshiping? Yes, God is the only one to worship, amen, Debbie. And, and if we are not careful, 
if we are not continuously in fellowship with him, you know, spending time with him, and we are not in relationship with him, it is easy to put him to the side and to put him on the back burner and begin worshiping other things. You know, some of us put our worth you know, in social media, you know, in our jobs, in our businesses, dreams, goals, aspirations, people, money, you know, and different things. And so it's important for us to think about that this morning. So for those of you that journal um, after the broadcast, I want you all to ask us to sit and take the time and ask yourself that question, who or what am I worshiping? Who or what am I worshiping? And you'll be surprised you'll be surprised at the answer, you know, because the first time I sat, you know, and, and asked myself this question, it was about two years ago, you know, after reading through the book of Acts and really reading this particular passage here that I just read, Acts chapter two, verse 42 and four, verse 47, I was surprised at my response. I was surprised at the answer. Debbie said, don't get distracted, stay forward, focused on God. Amen. And it's so easy for us to get distracted because again, you know, Satan is the master distractor and he knows that if he could just distract us and to get our focus off God and on things, you know, it's easy to do that. So he's constantly sending distractions our way, you know, and those distractions can even come in the form of people, even those that are closest to us. I believe that some people are sent just to be a distraction and so we have to constantly remember you know this is just a distraction hold on let's let's stay focused let's stay focused you know he's the master distractor and distractions steal you know um, distractions that it's a robber it's a thief and we already know the word tells us that the enemy comes to steal he comes to kill and he comes to destroy good morning Latanya Martin good morning to everyone I see a few names popping on if you have not shared the broadcast yet please go ahead and share and and then come back and share in the comments what it is that you are thankful for this morning. Um, so I want to talk about what happens when we worship, what happens when we worship. And I love this particular passage here that I'm going to go to and read. And it's um, in the book of Isaiah chapter 6. If someone can type this in for me, Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 through 8. Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 through 8. Again, Isaiah chapter 6 verses, yes, yeah, absolute truth. We must stay focused on Jesus Christ. Amen. And you know, there are so many things right now competing for our attention. Um, and that's why I say, you know, it's so easy for us to get distracted by other things that we lose focus, you know, on, on the main thing. We lose focus on what is important and that is Jesus Christ himself, you know, and it's so easy for us now with, you know, technology and so many other things to get easily distracted. So what happens when we worship? I love reading this passage and um, I'm going to read it out loud. Isaiah 6 verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah or Uzziah died, <laughs> I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were, ser were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces, and two, they covered their feet, and with two, they were flying, and they were calling to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. As the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips. Can anyone relate to this? And I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the, then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. When I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. Here I am, send me. And as I read this, I literally just picture this. You know, I just picture it. And I love where he said, <sighs> high and exalted and the train of his robe filled the temple. And just picturing his train and even in when I'm in 
the house of God and in worship and during the times of worship, I literally see that. I literally close my eyes and I literally picture that and I literally picture his robe filling the temple. And so when you sit and you really read this and meditate on it, close your eyes and picture what's going on in here, it is nothing short of amazing to me. And I remembered staying in this passage um, for a really long time, just reading, rereading, reading, rereading, and meditating on it. Um, so again, that was Isaiah 6, um, verses 1 through 8. So you may be asking, what happens when we worship? So I'm going to read what I have here. Worship causes us to remember how good God is, how big God is, how kind God is, how powerful, how loving, and how holy he is. When we take the time to sit and begin to worship and just think about who he is, you know, not what he's done or what we need, just about who he is, you know, and that's what worship causes, causes us to do. Worship causes us to see ourselves, all right? When we begin to see who God really is, then we begin to see who we really are. You know, when we see who God really is, we begin to see who we really are. So thank you, Paula, for sharing. So worship causes us to see ourselves. So it causes us to see who God is, how big he is, how amazing, how kind, how loving, how wonderful he is. And when we begin to see him in that way, we begin to see who we really are. Not who we think we are, not who others say that we are, not who we want to be, but who we really are. And worship also causes us to the desire to be obedient. When we begin to see who God is, you know, again, how amazing, how loving, how kind, how compassionate, how grateful. When we begin to see him in that way, it causes, it puts a desire in us to want to be obedient because that's what worship causes us to do. When we see who God is and who he's been to us, it causes us to want to be obedient. You know, we don't want any, want to do anything, you know, that, that would, would hurt him, you know, that we don't want to do anything that would disappoint him when we really begin to see who he is and who he's been to us. So worship causes us to desire to be obedient. And I always say this, um, tr not only does truth demand a response, but genuine worship, genuine, true worship, a matter of the heart when genuine, genuine worship demands a response. All right. And, and, and when we talk about worship here, it's us literally opening up our mouths and, you know, and adoring him and, and ascribing him and giving him the work that he is due and just really seeing him for who he is. We're not just talking about putting on a song and singing a song in church. That's not what we're talking about here today. And so genuine worship demands a response. Genuine worship. That's why I say genuine worship. Genuine worship um, demands a response. And as we spend time in worship, and let me tell you, I have learned this personally. Worship is warfare. You know, our worship is warfare. When you go into worship, and even yesterday, let me tell you all, you know, it's, it, you know, a lot of us leaders, we show up on Facebook smiling, you know, but behind the scenes, there's a lot of things going on. Like we literally have a life too. We are working on ourselves, you know, working out our own salvation. We have a whole family to take care of, a whole spouse, most of us. And so there's usually a lot of things going on. And, um, and even with everything that I have going on right now and everything, um, that the Lord has me doing, there's like a whole nother level of worship, of, of warfare that comes along with it so I found myself yesterday just having to stop everything and just go into worship you know just having to stop everything and go into worship and when you do that you literally feel chains breaking good morning good morning good morning to all of you that are just jumping on thank you so much um, go ahead and please make sure that you um, share the broadcast so I literally had to stop and go into warfare yesterday and what did that look like worshiping spending time in worship and what that helped to do was to get my eyes off of what was going on you know because i, I realized that i began to focus on that thing you know and i was just like hold on wait a minute and i had to shift my focus and worship <laughs> Doris, look not a half a spouse right a whole spouse like a whole spouse. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, not a half a spouse. Some of us have a whole entire spouse, like a whole family to take care of. I know sometimes the way I say things, it just comes out really funny. And so I need you all to say, worship is warfare. Worship is warfare. Worship is warfare. All right. And also worship is also the key to drawing near to God. So again, there are a lot of times when we say we feel like God is far away. We feel like God is near. We feel like God can't hear us. We must remember that God doesn't change. So what that means is God doesn't move. So if we feel far away from him, it's because we have moved and worship takes us back to that place because worship again causes us to remember who God is, you know, how amazing he is, you know, how awesome he is, how loving he is. And so it draws us close to him so worship brings us back to that place you know worship brings us back to that place um let me see i have that i want to read uh, john chapter four let me see let me open this up john chapter four somebody type in john chapter four for me john chapter four um, and i'm supposed to read verses 23 through 24 john chapter four verses 23 through 24 yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers do i have any worshipers on the broadcast and do i have any worshipers here this morning let me see you raise your hands do i have any worshipers somebody put the um emoji in there for me the little emoji where she's raising her hands do we have any worshipers here this morning <laughs> my god Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For they are the kind of worshipers that the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. All right, I see a lot of hands raised. I see a lot of hands raised and that is what God is looking for true worshipers and I believe that true worship is a matter of the heart worship is warfare worship helps to draw us closer to God um, worship causes us to remember who God is and how good he is worship causes us to see ourselves for who he really are in light of who God is you know hot not who we think that we are because you know sometimes we can tend to think highly more highly of ourselves than who we really are and I loved how we read in the book of Isaiah like whoa like woe is me <laughs> like woe is me and that is what you begin to say when you're in worship and it always brings you to a place you know of repentance i don't know it, it, at least it should you know brings you to a place of repentance when you begin to see who god is and see who you really are and it does that for me um and worship is definitely uh warfare for me and you know when i'm going through things that's what i begin to do when i realize that my focus has shifted and i need to get back you know, to get back to that place, I go into worship. Amen. And so that's all I have today. Um, I didn't have a whole lot to share um, regarding that. Um, I just had some notes here and wanted to kind of, so what I want you to do is meditate on, if someone can type these scripture references in for me, Acts chapter 2 verses 42 through 47, Acts chapter 2 verses 42 through 47, and then um, Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 through 8. Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 through 8 so we talked about what worship is and definition of worship is ascribing worth to something or someone so remember the question for you today is who or what are you worshiping who or what are you worshiping you had to do that yesterday too Jennifer me too me too for most of my day I just felt the warfare was strong the worship was strong yesterday the worship was strong yesterday the worship was real yesterday <laughs> so yes so we talked about what worship is so death by definition worship is ascribing work to something or someone and so remember if you are not worshiping God you are worshiping something or someone so the question is who or what are you worshiping who or what are you worshiping and it's easy for us to say I worship God you know but when you really sit I'm, I'm talking about grab your journal and grab your, your your pen and sit down and ask the question who or what am I worshiping and some of you will find 
that you are worshiping your jobs. You know, some of you will find that you are worshiping people. Some of you will find that you're worshiping relationships, you know, dreams and goals and aspirations and, you know, sports and, and other things and money, you know, so who or what are you worshiping? is the question for today all right so we're going to go into our declarations and you know what to do if you receive it god thank you for typing those in um jennifer i didn't see karen and joan on here i'm assuming they're traveling getting ready for a big weekend i'm so excited for y'all jennifer all right so to declare means to make known all right so to declare means to make known officially and so as we make declarations, that's what we're doing. We are making something known officially. So declarations, absolute truth. That's right. Who takes your main focus? And we need to sit and ask ourselves that every now and then, you know, like, where is my focus? Who or what has my focus? Um, and that's a very important question for us to, to ask. All right. So um, if you receive it, type I receive it. And if you have not shared the video yet, now is a great time to share as we are going in to our declarations. I decree and declare the perfect will of God over my life this day. I decree and declare the perfect will of God over my life this day. I decree and declare that joy and peace are my portion. I decree and declare that joy and peace is your portion, your portion, Paula. I decree and declare that joy and peace is your portion, Jennifer. I decree and declare that joy is your joy and peace is your portion. I decree and declare that my worship is imbued with the freshness of heaven. I decree and declare that my worship is imbued with the fresh the freshness of heaven. I decree and declare the Lord's goodness and I receive his glory. I declare the Lord's goodness and I receive his glory. I decree and <laughs> I decree and declare, and this is this was for me yesterday. I decree and declare that the muzzle has been removed from my mouth. I decree and declare that the muzzle has been removed from my mouth because you all know the enemy will come and try to put a muzzle on you. So I decree and declare today, this day, that the muzzle has been removed from your mouth because I know that's what he tried to do yesterday. I know for a fact that the enemy tried to muzzle me and shut me up and to stop me from saying some things. So as I was writing this declaration, <laughs> this was my stuff for myself today. All right. This was for my own self today. I declare that I am called to worship the Lord and I will do that no matter what. I declare that I am called to worship the Lord and I will do that no matter what. I declare that I am called. We are all called to worship. Did you know that? We are all called to worship. We were all created to worship. We were all called to worship, created to worship, to live a life of worship to live a life of worship and so that's it for today that's it i pray that i said something to bless you all um and again just spend some time this morning journaling and just asking yourself the question who or what am i worshiping who or what am i worshiping because if we are not worshiping god, worshiping god we are worshiping something or someone and again you'll be surprised at what the answer is because i remember the first time i sat and asked myself that question two years ago um i was surprised at my answer and i had to repent um and so you may find that you have to do that and that is okay yes jennifer joy and peace is your portion i had to remind myself of that yesterday joy and peace is your portion so i want to remind you all um if you have not remember to print out the um october promises and we are reading through these promises every day for the month of october and so there are 31 of them so you can read one each day um, but I actually sit and I read through all of the promises every single day. Um, it's only three pages. It takes literally about four minutes. And if you all need me to print it again, um, to share the link again, I will do it. Or someone type this in for me, 365, the number 365promises.com, 365promises.com. And then you can go and you can actually print off the promises for all 12 months for all 12 months and this has been such a blessing to sit and to read through this so 
I'll just read through the first page. And the first page is October 1st through October 11th. So I'll just go ahead and, and read through the first page so you can see how I read it. I don't read the dates, I just read the promises. I am the everlasting God. And I leave off the scripture references since they're already here. So this is what I do. I am the everlasting God. I am righteous in all my ways and kind in all that I do. I am your father and I love you even as I love my son Jesus. If you believe in Jesus, you will not be disappointed. You are my workmanship created in Christ to do my good works. I have chosen you to be a royal priesthood and a holy nation. Your life comes from me because you are my offspring. I have blessed you in Christ with one outpouring of grace after another. If you confess your sins, I will be faithful to forgive and cleanse you. Because of Jesus, you are free from all condemnation. I am happy to treat you as my child and I hope you will call me father. Even if your mother forgets you, I will never forget you. I will fulfill my promise for your life because my mercy endures forever. If you make your home in love, you live in me and I live in you. I love to sing over you, says the father, with loud shouts of joy. If I look after the sparrows, I will certainly take care of you, says the Lord. If you remain still, I will do your fighting for you. If you remain still, I will do your fighting for you. I will give you my power to destroy spiritual strongholds. I will cover you with my feathers and protect you with my wings. My angels will surround all who fear me. I will meet all your needs so you can overflow with good works. I will give you my strength and bless you with my peace. I have given you my spirit so your body could be my temple. My love covers a multitude of sins. My great peace will guard your heart and your thoughts in Jesus. I watch over you and I listen for your prayers. Jesus is happy to share his inheritance with you. Those who overcome will not be hurt by second death. I have called you to my eternal glory in Christ Jesus. I am giving you a kingdom that can never be shaken, says the Father. I promise a crown of life to all who love me despite their trials. Amen. What beautiful promises. So this is how I read them every day. So again, you can read them out loud like this every day, or you can just meditate on one throughout the day, but that's what I do. And that took maybe what, two minutes. And so just being reminded, being reminded of the promises of God. And again, this is the word, you know, this is the word, this is God speaking to us from his word. So the scripture references are here. So again, go to 365promises.com and print these three pages off and read these out loud every morning, okay? So I usually, in the morning I get up, yes, I grab a cup of coffee, I do drink coffee, black coffee, I make a whole cup and probably take a few sips and I literally sit with my promises, with my Bible and my journal. And I'm like, here I am, daddy, your daughter's here. Like your most favorite daughter in the whole entire world is here. And I sit and I begin and I start out reading these promises out loud. And I've been doing this, I found this website, I don't know how many years ago. And I actually even go in my Bible, I look up the scripture references and I highlight them, all right? So you can do this however you wanna do it, Just, just, spend some time we're spending all of october meditating on the promises of god for october and we, we might as well just do this every month so we'll um print this off again in november and print it off again for december um it's just wonderful being reminded of god's promises all right so 365promises.com and go ahead and print yours um yours off um, just so many different ways you can do it. So I just wanted to show you what I do and how I do it. All right. So I love you all. So Father, we thank you. Father, we honor you. Father, we bless you. Father, we thank you for your word, your holy word. We thank you, Father, for this word that leads us. We thank you for your word that guides us. And we thank you for your word that protects us. Yes, Debbie, I printed the whole year out as well. And I have it in my in my uh, my prayer binder. So you can do that as well. And so, Father, we thank you. And I just pray the peace of God over you all in Jesus name, the strength of God, um, of God over you in Jesus name. And remember, remember the joy of the Lord is your strength and favor has gone before you today. All right. Now go ahead and type in hashtag. I will read my Bible.
Hashtag, I will read my Bible. I'm missing some comments. Let's see. I don't know what's going on, Maggie. I'll go back and read it. All right. So I love you all. Have an awesome day. If this has blessed you, please go ahead and share the broadcast and go ahead and go to 365promises.com and print off, if nothing else, the promises for the month of October and read them each morning. All right. So I love y'all. Have a great day. Remember, the question is who or what are you worshiping? All right. Bye, y'all.